Hi everyone and welcome to the first Daily Citizen News Update of the new year. In 2021, our team is striving to bring you information that impacts your life, from breaking news events to policy and cultural issues. No matter what topic we're covering, we want to make sure our reporting represents the whole story. Sadly, it seems many media outlets these days fail to do just that. Our promise to you is that we will always do our best to bring you news that is fair and accurate. Our team has already been busy covering the top stories of 2021. We were on the ground in Georgia to cover the Senate runoff election and a day later at the Capitol reporting on the historical events of that day. Unfortunately, our full video and reporting of the president's remarks in Dalton, Georgia was removed from YouTube earlier this week because according to them, it is content that advances false claims that widespread fraud, errors, or glitches changed the outcome of the U.S. 2020 presidential election. We've appealed YouTube's censorship of our reporting, but have yet to hear back. The public should be able to consume news from a variety of sources, and we will continue fighting to ensure that that's the case. So on that note, let's get to our top stories. As many of you know, our team reported live from Washington, D.C. last week on the protests and riots that occurred at the Capitol. Sadly, multiple people lost their lives, including a Capitol police officer in the hours following the unrest. The events at the Capitol went on to trigger a tsunami of other significant events, including President Trump being banned by Twitter and Facebook, as well as the free speech alternative Parler being blacklisted by Amazon Web Services. This week culminated with the second impeachment of President Trump, and we begin our coverage there with an update from Zach Mettler. In a historic vote on Wednesday, the House of Representatives approved House Resolution 24, the article of impeachment against President Donald Trump. The final tally was 232 to 197 and included 10 Republicans who voted with every Democrat in favor of the resolution. The bill charged the president with incitement of insurrection, alleging that his speech before supporters in Washington, D.C. on January 6th caused the storming of the Capitol building. Uh, this vote makes President Trump the first president in American history to be impeached twice. Republican Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who voted against impeachment, uh, said that the president bears some responsibility for the attack. Uh, however, impeaching the president when he has less than one week left in office would be a mistake. Uh, in order for the president to be removed from office, the Senate would need to convict the president with 67 votes. But according to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, the Senate is not even going to consider convicting President Trump until after President-elect Biden is sworn in. Thanks, Zach. Well, in the last seven days, tech companies have moved to ban the sitting president of the United States, as well as many conservative voices on Parler. How did it happen and what are the consequences? Brittany Raymer has more on the tweets no longer heard around the world. The censorship of Donald Trump on social media continues, with Twitter banning the president last Friday. According to a statement from Twitter, the account was taken down due to concerns that the president would incite further violence after pro-Trump rioters stormed the Capitol building. World leaders have expressed concerns about this decision, with German Chancellor Angela Merkel calling it problematic, and the French junior minister for European affairs saying he was shocked by the decision of a private company to take such action against a world leader. The censorship on Twitter is not limited to Trump, but has extended to other conservatives as well, including the producers of the Gosnell film, the conservative Judicial Watch, and Facebook has censored Ron Paul. In this age of social media censorship, it seemed like Parler would become the alternative. However, on Sunday night, Amazon Web Services pulled out as a web host for the social media company, essentially allowing the site to go dark. Parler has filed an antitrust lawsuit against Amazon, and for now has supposedly found an alternative hosting site, but at this time it still remains offline. For conservatives and those that cherish free speech and freedom of expression, these incursions are a concerning sign that private companies are making unilateral decisions about what Americans can and cannot see. Those are a few of the top stories our team has been covering over the last week. Be sure to visit thedailycitizen.org for additional updates and breaking news. Before we go, a special programming note that we'll have live coverage Wednesday morning of President-elect Biden's inauguration available here on our YouTube and Facebook page. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.